Hi, I'm Brendan Gaffney, Managing Editor here at Popular Woodworking Magazine, and today we're going to do a little tool test. This is the Lixie Dead Blow Mallet. It's a mallet that I use for assembly and for glue-ups, uh, for bringing stuff home, that kind of task. And what I really like about this mallet are the interchangeable heads. It ships with the black and green heads. Black is hard, green is medium, and for an extra $10.95 I bought the soft head, which is the red-orange head. And today we're gonna run through and do a little ding test. I've got maple, cherry, and pine. And you can see I've cordoned them off. So we're gonna give some blows to these and uh, see which of the hardnesses of head will leave what kind of dents. So you have a better idea of what, you're, what you might be looking for uh, when you're purchasing heads. And if you work in maple, cherry, or pine, you might have a good idea of what you can do. Uh, I'm also gonna bring in uh, a second hand to swing the hammer. Since I've used this before, I sort of have an idea of how I use it, so we're gonna bring in David Lyle, our online content manager, to swing the mallet too, and uh, just so we've got a good diverse range of swings. So let's start, let's start uh, testing this mallet out. All right, so here we've got our maple, our cherry, and our pine. Uh, I've also smooth planed and put a little wax on these so it's easy to tell if we've dinged the surface. So now I've got the hardest head in my dead blow mallet on our hardest wood. So you can see I've got a B for black. And let's give that a swing. All right. I feel a, maybe a small depression. And looking in the light, mm, there's not much. But I might worry a little bit about using the hardest head even on this hard wood. Let's try the green head, our medium head, on that same piece here. And that I don't feel any depression on. Uh, and in the light, I don't see any depression either. Uh, this may be superfluous, but let's switch out heads and try the orange head now on the hard maple. Uh, I suspect we're not gonna leave a ding, but let's be thorough here. So here we go. Yeah, and there's, there's no marring on that orange head here. So orange and green, certainly safe on hard maple. Even the black is relatively safe, although maybe I would use a block if I was using the black mallet head to assemble hard maple. All right, so now we've moved on to cherry, which again has been smooth, planed, and waxed, so we can look in the reflection and look for dings. Uh, starting with the hardest mallet head in our medium density wood here. And that left a ding. Not much of one, but there's definitely, I can see a round depression here. So let's try now the green head, the medium head, on the same medium density cherry board. That was a hard hit and I don't feel much. And uh, looking in the reflection here, I don't see anything. So looks like the green head is soft enough to work with uh, cherry. And now we're gonna swap out that head. One thing I like about the green head, you may have noticed in the video there, is that it seems to be sort of the deadest blow for this dead blow mallet. There's not a lot of rebound on the green head. And now our softest head on our medium density wood here. And I didn't expect that to leave a ding since our green head didn't, and I don't see anything. It's not even, not even marring that wax finish I put on there. So orange head, safe on cherry, and even the green head is safe on cherry, though the hardest black head looks like it will ding up our uh, medium density woods. So let's move on to the pine. So judging by our results on the cherry, I suspect we might be leaving dings with the black head. We'll see about the green head, and we'll really see about the orange head here. But here comes our hardest head on our softest wood here. Well, uh, I don't think I need to look in the reflection for that one. We've left a pretty, pretty healthy ding there, and you can see. Yeah, that's it, and it even looks like it's encouraged a little splitting on our board. So, black head, hardest head, definitely not safe on pine. Let's move on to our medium head here. Here's the green head on our softest wood. All right, definitely a smaller ding, and looks like you can even see I'm swinging with a little bias to the right-hand side, but nice dead blow with the green, but we're certainly leaving a mark, and well, I don't have to feel to know that I've left a mark there. But now, sort of the ultimate test here, this soft head 
Let's see how it does on our softest wood. Oh. All right. Soft head on soft wood. Let's see what we got here. That was pretty good. That was a pretty full swing. Let me give it one more shot here with extra gusto and make sure I gave it a fair shot there. Yeah, I can see the faintest, the faintest little outline of the hammerhead there. Uh, if I were assembling something that was pre-finished, I might be dismayed, but this is really soft white pine and I'm just barely seeing anything and it even looks like it's only in the soft wood between the rings. Uh, I'm gonna call in my outside hand here though and see if we can replicate these results without my uh, maybe sympathetic hammer swings and get sort of a second opinion on that. All right, we've got David Lyle here to give us a second opinion on hammer blows. So he's gonna start with the hardest head on the softest wood. Let's see it. Well, uh, you may notice we had uh, some simple failure there. Looks like uh, the hardest head on that pine didn't, uh, didn't do so hot. So David, let's see that same behemoth swing on the uh, green head now. And uh, that's, that's pretty good results there. Looks like a pretty significant ding. So now David's gonna switch out the heads and uh, give the softest touch a, uh, a try on our pine here. So he's got the head switched out and let's see that big arm. And with those behemoth swings, it looks like there's a little denting in this sort of ringed area around where he hit. But again, it looks like it's only between the rings. I would feel pretty good using that orange head on, well, really anything except for, well, if I had a real problem, I might use a block if I were working with pine. Although I will say, rarely do I use pine for furniture, but pretty good test there, it looks like those three results give a pretty good idea of what you might be looking at using that Lixie Dead Blow hat mallet. All right, so that was a pretty fun test. I've got my Lixie here set up for probably how I'm gonna leave it set up. I've taken the black head off. Even on the maple, I felt like the black head might do a little damage. And generally when I'm assembling something, I don't wanna have to go back and replane surfaces. Uh, that's a pain. So green was definitely safe on the maple and green was also safe on the cherry. Uh, but as we saw in, well, as we saw in David Lyle's rather explosive results here, uh, the green is not safe on pine, but pretty remarkably, the orange is a pretty good bet. He was doing overhead swings and we've really just barely got denting. So I think how I'll leave mine set up is the orange head for maybe softer woods or gentler assemblies and the green head for true persuasion. It doesn't hurt to use a block when you're assembling and I might probably still keep a block nearby. But it's nice to know that if I miss my block or if I have to run across the shop in a panicked glue up, I can reach for this hammer and take pretty hardy swings without worrying too much about denting my work. So that was a fun little tool test and I hope you found it informative.